historical mobile cloud service episode, we're going to take a high level overview of MCS's storage API. So you get an understanding of what off device lightweight storage capabilities MCS provides to you. And more importantly, you can see how to incorporate this into your mobile solutions to accelerate your mobile development efforts. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Imagine you were tasked to build a mobile application that needs to share data, images and files that are separate and distinct to the enterprise data you already store in your enterprise systems. So possibly a requirement is to share data about an application user across different devices such as an iPad, an iPhone and a web application so the user's preferences are used on all of these. Or imagine a case of tracking a user's progress through a mobile application so they can switch from that iPhone, iPad and desktop web application and those applications must retain the context of where the user is in that application. Or imagine still it's simply a case of needing to share files or images amongst different users of your mobile app on different devices. Now, mobile devices allow you to store data on the device through the things of like, well, a SQLite database. But as the data is on the device, by its very nature, it's locked up on the device, so it can't be shared with other mobile users of your app on other devices. So to solve this problem, potentially you would create some sort of mobile, well, peer-to-peer -peer network to share the data. But um, now that sounds like a pretty overbaked solution, you'd agree. Maybe a challenge for our expert mobile developers, you know, to keep them going over the weekend, but not something every mobile development team out there should be building from the ground up. That's certainly beyond my skill set. Alternately, as you've likely already guessed, then the simplest solution is to use storage in the cloud to act as a data bucket with multiple users can interact and work with, essentially sharing data via configuration files, images, or whatever your mobile needs are. Now, of course, there are plenty of third party cloud solutions out there, including Apple's iCloud as an example, or Google's equivalent and so on. However, in supporting many different applications, on many different platforms with different cloud backends, this starts to become a bit of a maintenance headache, being spread across several platforms. Ideally, you want to centralize on one solution for everything. This is where Oracle's mobile cloud service storage API comes in. It's one of the pre-built platform APIs provided by MCS. To save work for the mobile developer, MCS provides through the storage API, lightweight storage for mobile applications and their users to share and store data, including text, images, and files, and so on. As MCS works as the intermediary between your enterprise backend systems, MCS storage can also cache information from the enterprise backend for faster access from your mobile applications, essentially offloading capacity demands on your enterprise backend to the cloud. And let's agree, that's what the cloud was designed to do after all. MCS storage is not intended as a replacement for more sophisticated storage solutions, but does provide a useful solution for lightweight data needs. And as we'll see, based around an easy to use REST API, making the mobile developer's life fairly easy. So an obvious question about the MCS storage API is what can it actually store? Well, it's pretty simple. MCS storage provides the ability to store files where each file can be a text file or any binary object such as an image or a document. The storage API does not store raw text or columns and rows. Rather, such text is always encapsulated in a text file. This applies if you want to store, say, XML or JSON content, simply put it in a text file and submit this to the MCS storage API. In order to access the data once you've stored it within the MCS Storage API, mobile developers can access it via REST APIs published through our MCS mobile backend, or alternatively the MCS Client SDK, which as we know provides native mobile APIs for doing exactly the same. Now, which method the mobile developers choose to use is based on their own preferences, though the MCS Client SDK provides APIs that reduce the amount of code to work with, with the remote MCS storage API. Now, alternatively, MCS service developers working inside MCS can access the storage APIs through their custom API Node.js code, which allows the service developer to manipulate the storage on the mobile's developer's behalf indirectly. 
Now another common question we get about the MCS Storage API is in the background, is it implemented in a traditional related relational database or a NoSQL database or what is it? Well, MCS does have a fully featured Oracle RWMS available to it as a DBAS instance, a database instance in the cloud, and that is designed for your heavyweight storage needs. You'll learn more about that through the database API, another MCS platform API in a later episode. But as I've been highlighting to you up to date, the storage API we are talking about here is for your lightweight storage solutions. Now, returning to the question, how is the storage API implemented? Well, currently we don't expose how it's implemented. That's a part of the Oracle secret source and we're not giving that secret away just yet, or at least I'm not gonna do it in this presentation. So what we're going to do instead is explain that the MCS Storage API is built around the concepts of collections, such as a collection of employees, and objects, such as an individual employee in that collection. And by design, these collections and objects nicely model the concept of REST resources and their operations. For example, you can get forward slash employees forward slash objects forward slash 100 to retrieve a specific employee from the collection or you can get forward slash employees to get all the employees from the collection. Typically via the storage API, you create one or more collections at design time by the MCS user interface and make them available to your mobile applications through exposing them through an MCS mobile backend. When you define a collection, well, you give it a name, which is used in defining its complete URL. So the URL is the base URL for your MCS uh, instance, storage, collections, and then the collection name. For example, a collection named user preferences would be accessed through the URL, again, the MCS base URL, forward slash storage, collections, and the user preferences, and that is case sensitive. From here, we then populate the collection with its objects. And it's worth noting a collection object don't need to be of the same type. So for example, user preferences can store a JSON file of user settings as well as an avatar image file. To create the objects and manipulate them, we do this through the following URI scheme using the standard REST verbs, get, put, post, delete, head, and so on. So the URI scheme is the MCS base URL, storage collections, the collection name, so user preferences as example, objects, and then object ID. For example, a mobile user may upload an avatar picture to share across apps by calling a HTTP post on, again, the MCS base URL, storage collections, user preferences, objects, avatar, where avatar is the object ID. Now, when you create the object, you supply the object ID and that's used on the object to identify it. But alternatively, if you don't supply an object ID, the system, that is MCS, can generate a unique object ID for you, commonly referred to as a global unique object ID or the GUID. But hmm, now hang on. If every mobile user is uploading a picture with the same object ID that they've chosen, so maybe we're talking about the avatar image example we're just talking about, how does that work? Why don't we have object collisions in our collections with non-unique object IDs? Well, this brings up a discussion nicely on an MCS storage feature known as shared and isolated collections. Now, how do these work? On creating an MCS storage collection, you can define whether the collection is shared amongst multiple mobile users or isolated and secured to just one mobile user. Shared collections allow users to view and act upon the same data in a single shared instance of a collection by MCS. And a good example might be, say, a leader scoreboard in a mobile app computer game that everybody needs to see. Conversely, isolated collections then in MCS create an instance of the collection per mobile user. And the information that is stored in the collection is protected from access from all other users, which is well suited to the storing the user preferences and the avatar image picture object ID example we just discussed earlier. Now, given the names isolated and shared, I bet you can work out some characteristics of each type of collection. First, for a shared collection, any changes made by one user to objects in the shared collection are instantly viewable to all the other users who have access to that same shared collection, because it's just one instance. For an isolated collection, as each user gets their own instance of the collection, the only person who can see the changes to a specific isolated collection, their isolated collection, is that user themselves. Second, in a shared collection, if a user deletes or changes a shared object or reuses the same object ID which somebody else has wanted to use, well, that's going to cause each other grief. 
But conversely, again, with isolated collections, the only user can, who will scream when a record was accidentally deleted from the isolated collection is, well, that specific mobile user. Now, in reality, it isn't the users who directly delete or change the records. It's your mobile app calling the storage APIs that does this. So hopefully you'll build in safeguards from this happening. But the issues still apply. You still need to be aware of them. Sharing resources risk manipulation by other users. Great, so overall, given the storage API that we've discussed here, you can see that it has a simple implementation model. It's another example of how easy MCS is to use. And I hope you'll take the chance to continue watching the storage API episodes to learn how to integrate storage API into your mobile applications. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you in the next episodes very soon.